Yeah, so we here today with uh, Kiesa Phillips, you know. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about you and what you do today on the Jelly Vision. I am Jelly. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So, from a career perspective, right? Uh, I am a chief or deputy chief information security officer mm -hmm. or also known as deputy CISO for the city of New York. Mm -hmm. And I head up uh, the threat management function for New York City Cyber Command. And what that means is we basically uh, defend, respond, uh, and in general protect the assets of the city of New York and in turn the residents from cybersecurity type threats. Nice, nice. So what brings you to DC? Well, to see you. <laughs> My family, of course, but in particular it is um, International Women's Month, right? Uh, so I have been working with an organization that is bringing together uh, a bunch of international delegates uh, to talk about their respective uh, missions. They are all mayors in different parts of the world. And today we spoke about cybersecurity, what we're doing in New York City, uh, what they can learn from us and what they can bring back to their regions uh, to incorporate into their mandate. So if you think about a lot of the women uh, are one, they are underrepresented because they are one of, uh, many mayors but only women and uh, they come in with a huge mandate some of them not having access to technology or not having any insight into how they should be securing the technologies and uh, their their citizens or their residents of their region so it was really interesting to talk to them about the things that we're doing and how they could apply to their respective regions so um how did it how did it turn out I think it went well um, it was very insightful for me mm -hmm. uh, because I get to learn about what they're doing and the challenges that they're facing and uh, surprisingly they were very in tune with the subject matter of cybersecurity and um, even with the language barrier they were very much interested in how they could infuse cybersecurity into their practices on a daily basis. So um, the room was very um, collaborative, I would say, and very intrigued, and they asked tons of questions about it. Uh, so I think overall it was a great discussion, and it's even going to be leading to uh, further initiatives that, that we'll have. Okay. So I'm trying, I had two questions, but I hope one doesn't perceive the other so it's like how did you get into it and then I want to know what makes you credible to do what you do yeah great question um, so I got into cybersecurity I, I studied computer science uh, in undergrad and uh, during my last year I I always had like this knack for root, ca root cause analysis so I always want to understand like how something occurred uh, so I started working on a lot of projects around security and this is way before security was very popular or cybersecurity was even turned uh, coined mm -hmm. we used to call it information security or information assurance um, but I, I landed an internship with the federal reserve bank in new york uh, working for uh, the national incident response team a lot of initiatives around uh, the federal reserve uh, system and the financial management system and i was pretty much cooked from then so i've been working in a lot of different areas of security um, a lot of time in our security operations center or threat analysis centers working on threat intelligence um, leading up a threat analysis center and then also working with a lot of the financial institutions in the northeast and um, most recently heading up uh, the Barclays uh, U.S. Incident Response Team. So I've had a lot of experience on the defensive side of, of security and uh, protecting and preventing uh, cyber threats to companies that are worth millions and millions. Uh, so it's very interesting to come and provide the skill set to the city of New York. Um, especially because I am a resident of New York. I understand what we need for our residents. Um, so to other part of your question about what makes me credible, I guess 
you know, I kind of answer that, whereas I have a good amount of experience in different areas uh, that makes me one qualified for the role and credible to other people based on what I've been able to put in place. Um, I also, outside of undergrad, have a lot of certifications in various areas. A lot of executives don't necessarily have strong technical skills, but I built my career in technical skills, but then also have the ability to be very uh, strategy focused. And uh, so I'm, you ever seen that, uh, it's like an emoji or, or not emoji, uh, a meme where the, there's the leader in the front and he's working with his team, like mm -hmm. that's me, okay. you know, like I am in there with my team. I'm not just telling people what okay. to do. Okay. You know? cool. Cool. Okay, so why is what you do important to like the everyday normal person? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say cybersecurity is something that touches all of our lives. You know, our lives are so much uh, infused with um, cyberspace. Like, it's very digital focused. You know, almost everybody has a phone. Almost everyone is giving away a lot of data, searching on Google and typing in your information everywhere. So there's so much of your life that is online you know and if you don't have a digital presence it's you probably don't exist or you know you're doing things just to ensure that you don't have a digital presence and that that's not necessarily a good or bad thing mm -hmm. but it's very rare that you don't have a trail of data out there uh, so when you do you have to protect it in in any way possible and, and I, I always say that cybersecurity cannot be conducted in a silo um, so you will be targeted, you know, whether it's through your organization or just as an individual, mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of what people don't necessarily focus on, uh, at least from an intelligence standpoint, is like influence operations. So there's a lot of things that are being targeted towards you that you don't even understand or know about, even if we take something as mundane as advertisement. Right, so you know that when you're searching something and then you go on Facebook or Instagram, now you see ads about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so they are tracking certain things about you and what you like. And can you imagine the amount of information that, that can be amassed about you based on simple things that you do on your mobile device every day mm -hmm. that paints a picture of your life? Mm -hmm. You know, your location. You know, they know where you live, they know what you like. You know, so if somebody actually is able to grab that information and then target you, they have a much better ability to do so. And that could be looked at from an adversary perspective as reconnaissance. Uh, an adversary has a target, they perform reconnaissance on that target, and then they have a better way to either sell them something, or they have a better way to get them to do something to give them credentials or information that they need to then be able to pivot and do something to you or to, mm -hmm. to, to something that you're attached to like a company. Okay. You know, so I think we are all doing this for legal and illegal reasons. Mm -hmm. Like advertisers do it for something legal to sell you things, mm -hmm. but then adversaries do it for something illegal to penetrate an environment that you're in, you yeah, know, where they right. could steal personal information and they can sell it and they make money. Cybercrime is very lucrative, you know, so everybody should be part of this mission because it takes everyone. Um, users are our weakest link. So individuals, we're, we are all the weakest links. So uh, we all have to be aware of the threats so we know that so we know how to not become a victim. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because that's something I, I'm fearful of all the time, to be honest with you. So what are some things that an individual could do to keep themselves safe? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it starts with just being aware. So you know, like, very simple, if you get an email that you see and it looks strange, you know, don't assume that this is okay. You know, this, this may be a link to uh, a phishing page or something, you know, that is asking for your credentials and it may look just like your banking account. Um, so it may look like your ch chase.com or your bank of America.com, et cetera. Um, and if you enter those credentials, then you have to imagine that if this is not the right site, this is an adversary on the other side that now has your credentials. And if they have your credentials, now they have access to your bank account. And that's where two-factor is important, right? Multi-factor authentication. So that is basically saying, okay, here are your credentials, but 
that's not enough, you also need something else. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can have like a text message sent to you, or you can use like Google Authenticator or something to then be a second layer of protection on things that are important to you, right? Okay, layer it up. Exactly, layer it up. And then also, um, there, there's a bunch of things that you could do like from an email perspective. Um, if you're not sure, you know, look at the message header and see exactly where this came from. You know, you can hover over a link without clicking it to see if this is the actual link and that's, that's called a hyperlink, right? So with a hyperlink, sometimes an adversary or anybody can make a, look, a link look, just like if you write an email, you can, you know, highlight it, right click and do right. hyperlink, okay. right? And then put the true email, the, okay. the true link that I you want somebody to go to. Okay. Um, another thing is there, there is a process mm. by which we are trying to get the whole internet on like secure encryption, uh, encrypted sites. So whenever you go to a web page and you see like HTTP, that is just an unencrypted site. And usually in, in some browsers like uh, Chrome or uh, Firefox, they'll tell you if you're on an unsecure site. Mm -hmm. You know, so you should always be using HTTPS wherever possible, especially when you're going to be entering credentials. You know, you should never use the same credentials for multiple places. Because if you, if you imagine, if one of these sites get hacked, and now they have your credentials, they might look at other yeah, sites. Exactly. exactly, so now you got popped five times instead of one. Okay. You know, so uh, there's very small things that, they seem small, but they add up to something right. big, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. There's another thing that you could do, you could also check, maybe this is just part of like, your cleaning process once per quarter. You could go to haveibeenpawned.com and just type in your name and see if it pulls back any of the records. Um, so basically what it will do is it will look across a bunch of um, data breaches mm -hmm. and it will tell you has your information been part of any of these breaches. Mm -hmm. You know, So then you know, okay, yeah, there's no reason to be fearful, but now you know. Like, okay, my information has been part of the target breach. Mm -hmm. So now I know that maybe I need to change my password that was associated with this. Or maybe I need to put credit monitoring on my, you know, mm -hmm. on my credit reports. You know, just small things like that to just ensure that you're a little bit more safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh... So another thing that you could do is, let's say a lot of people are always in, like, Starbucks or other internet cafes where they're online, uh -huh. you know, and most of the time those those um, Those networks are insecure, okay. you know, so if you could just go to a, a, a Wi-Fi uh, point and It allows you on without a password then you know that it's insecure Okay, so being that you could do that you can also and not to say that this is happening but just also be mindful that on an unsecure Wi-Fi network then someone with bad intentions could be sniffing that network, okay. can be looking at all the traffic. So let's say you go on Amtrak and you go, on, like I'm about to go on Amtrak today. If I go on Amtrak and Amtrak does not require me to put in a password and it's unsecure, then someone else on the train can be looking at what I'm doing. Not necessarily the web pages that um, I'm on, but it can see all of that traffic. So whenever you are going like from your computer to another computer, let's say to some website, it shows like this is your source IP address, this is the destination, this is the protocol you're using, this is the port you're using, this is the password that you use, this is the username that you use. So that stuff is in the clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so not to say that you shouldn't or you can't use unsecured mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, but be mindful of what you do when you're on them. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, let me see here. I got one, might be a little inappropriate, but I gotta ask you, but I'm not gonna ask it right now. Um, <laughs> we'll come to that one, we'll come back to that one. Um, what is, uh, well, how could somebody like me or somebody out there, like, you know, in, in their homes that's interested, get involved in making a career out of this? Yeah, great question. Um, it's a great career to have, so, and we're under resourced, so. There's tons of, from a, from a collegiate perspective, there's tons of um, schools that have majors now around cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one way. Uh, prior to that, or even after that, there's tons of online free resources. 
uh, one that I always mention is Cybrary. So C Y B R A R Y, uh, just like library, but cyber. Mm -hmm. um, there's tons of material around different pathways into cybersecurity, um, and you basically have to like find your niche because it is a huge field. So you got to determine where you want to sit. You know, you want to be on the offensive side, like. You want to be more penetration, vulnerability assessment, trying to get into the networks uh, for a good cause? Or do you want to be on the responsive or defense side where as you're responding, you're detecting, you're preventing attacks from happening? Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also this softer side uh, where maybe you're not as technical and you, but you have like good strategic, good writing skills, good written communication. You can work on policies and standards and a governance audit. You know, um, there's a lot of opportunity within the field. Okay, okay. Um, nice, nice. Um, so I guess, like, I'm just trying to promote this to, like, some little boy or young girl, especially young girl, being as though it's Women's Month, mm -hmm. um, you know, that this is a nice field to get into. I'm kind of interested in getting into cybersecurity. Uh, here's the thing. Um, that I had to ask because I got to ask because I'm just curious but because I'm on the internet a lot sometimes where I don't need to be and then I'm thinking so just go ahead and say it if you're on a pornographic site right <laughs> are you like exposed more to like hackers or to the you know yeah um so I don't I wouldn't say you're exposed you're more exposed but they're it is known that, you know, on those types of sites, there is a lot of um, methods of delivering malware okay. to your computers. Right, because you actually right. get, like, like messages and, you know, I have an Apple and it's like, you know, they don't get viruses, but you get all kinds of, like, messages to saying you, you're being infected or, you mm -hmm. know, somebody's taking your information and it's like are they like gaming me or like trying to extort me because i've heard all kind of stuff where people will extort you like say they've got your and is this possible for somebody to, to extract the video you're watching and a video of you as well because they, they're saying that people are actually like i said depending on from a thousand dollars on to like five, five to ten thousand and they're like trying to get money and they're saying we're going to show this to all of your friends on Facebook, your, your grandparents, like, you know, so is that really possible? Anything's possible. So okay. I would say there, there's a few things that are at play. One, no matter what you're on, your, your mm -hmm. camera should always be covered unless you don't want it to be covered. Let's say okay. you're on FaceTime or something like that. So there are little things that you can purchase okay. to cover your camera. And if you don't have them right now, just put tape on there. Okay. Um, so there are methods that people can tap into your microphone and your camera. Oh, wow. Now, what you're probably seeing on these sites most of the time is just them trying to trick you into thinking that you so have you something like that. So you can program. purchase their stuff. Okay. I right? Mean, so, that's what I figured. Exactly. Okay. So is it going to happen where you are just watching a video and now you have malware in your computer? Less than likely. Okay. Um, however, if you do click on the thing that they are telling you, then yes, that will be probably some type of malware or some type of rootkit that is coming on to your, okay. to your device. Okay. Um, now, what I'll say is the reason why that happens, obviously, you know, a lot of people go to those types of sites, mm -hmm. so it's a great way for them to deliver malware to you. Okay. Um, and most malicious types of attacks happen at the browser or via a browser plugin. So you also always have to be mindful of what you're downloading, completely read and see like what happens when something gets downloaded to your computer. Mm -hmm. So there's certain things that you can run on your computer and this is probably a little bit more technical, but you know, you can look at the processes that it starts when it comes on to your when you're downloaded or you execute it. Okay. You can look at your registry and there's certain programs that you, that you can use, let's say like Redshot and it tells you like what is the difference between when I before I executed this program and after and you can see what it has oh, done to okay. your computer right because okay. a lot of this stuff runs in the background and you have no idea what happened right, right. Um, but yeah so long story short is a lot of those things are just trying to trick you to believe that okay. you have something so you can purchase okay. but from an extortion perspective um, it's, it's highly known uh, to, to occur to users and 
either whether it's like sex extortion or ransomware uh-huh. they're looking to sometimes you know if you do download something then they do have some type of information on you and it is an easy way for them to make money because okay. obviously people don't want to be exposed okay okay another thing is what if i'm watching my person something on my phone and i put it on my computer but it's me but I don't. I want to make sure nobody. Is it possible for somebody to see it? Do I have to make sure I'm offline or something just to be safe? What do you mean? So I have a private video, but it's of me and someone else, right? Yeah. And I just want to make sure that it's not uploaded or you know, get, you know, because you know how on Love and Hip Hop they'd be like, oh, it wasn't me that posted this video. Mm-hmm. Somebody. I just want to make sure nothing like that happens, where as though I'm looking at some footage and it's extracted from some malicious party or something like that. If it, or is that possible? How are you transferring it to your? So I might have a USB drive okay. on my phone. If if your if your computer is you know doesn't have any like um, monitoring on it or um, mm-hmm. if your computer is not compromised already mm-hmm. um, and neither is your phone, then you should be fine transferring your data to your okay. phone to your. Okay. 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 Because that's something I'm always skeptical of, so I just always go offline. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Better safe than safe. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to probably stick to that then. <laughs> yeah. um, let me see. And then also, if you have particular things that you would say are of importance to you mm-hmm. on your computer, just encrypt those drives. You know, and you have a Mac, you can do that on them okay. where you can put specific security or additional security around the folders that are important to you. Oh, okay. You know? Wow. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um... Let's see, I think uh, anything else you want to mention about what you do? Um, I would encourage more women to get into the field, especially at a young age. I, I would, even even uh, boys, honestly. Um, more the merrier. And uh, as a minority, we're, uh, we're definitely a minority uh, in this industry. And um, I would say that it's, it's also... It's not only a, a fun and a dynamic industry to be in, but it's also uh, a highly opening and welcoming industry, whereas the community is super helpful. Um, and you're making an impact based on the things that you're doing. Um, just be brave. And um, there's tons of technical exercises that you've been doing. There's a lot of like cyber ranges. There's a lot of uh, capture the flag events to help you hone your skills. So, you know, there's only a certain amount that you can learn from a theoretical standpoint. But, you know, get in there and start playing with some stuff. There's tons of challenges online. You know, Google cybersecurity challenges. And you can see a lot of these. And and most of these things are free. Uh, So there's really no barrier to entry except your interest. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, um, real quick, just want to know a little bit more about you. What are some other little things you like to do? Or, you know, pastimes, yeah. hobbies, whatever. Um, so, I love to work out. I love to dance. Okay. Uh, soca, reggae, Afro beats. That's my thing. Okay. Um, hang out with my son, of course. And um, just chill. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, me. cool. All right. I appreciate you. That's that's it right there. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> All right, that concludes everything. Thanks for uh, coming on the Jelly Vision. I hope you enjoyed yourself in the city. I did. Um, you had a dynamic uh, conference. Um, just keep keep going, keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you, proud of you too. All right. Jelly Vision for life. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, <laughs> that concludes it, man. Perfect. Thank y'all. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Jelly Vision? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Jelly Vision for you. <laughs>